Yeah, le let me quickly introduce um, Adopter on a very high level. Uh, and then uh, I'll introduce also the authors, of course, here. Um, a large corpus of text, uh, let's say the internet. And if they are really good at compressing a lot of data, and they are really, really good at generating and completing text. But in practice, um, we need to do more training on downstream tasks, on tasks that are useful, um, that, that are able to that are able to guide the model to solve useful tasks in practice for us humans. And one of these tasks is instruction, um, following instructions, right? It's an interesting problem because we would like to give a model instructions or ask it questions and it can perform some actions or give an explanation um, um, or summarization. And uh, to do that, we need to continue training the model on that new data that we have. But because these are really huge models, they are multi-billion models, multi-billion parameter models, it would be quite expensive to do that if we just continue training and continue tuning every parameter in the network. It would require the same amount of resources as pre-training because we need uh, hundreds of GPUs uh, and a lot of infrastructure to do that. So um, there's a big demand uh, and uh, for, for doing that efficiently. Um, and uh, so there have been these uh, parameter efficient um, tuning, fine tuning uh, methods emerging that allow us to do exactly that, but on a very um, small uh, subset of parameters. And there are a lot of methods out there, and one is adapters, and one specific one um, uh, from the group here uh, with uh, Llama adapter. And so um, that's what we're going to do uh, to talk about today, uh, the specific uh, technique, and um, how it even can extend to multiple modalities, not only text, but also um, images. Um, I'm going to quickly the link of the paper, of course, here. Um, oops. Let me find the chat. For the audience, the paper we're going to talk about um, is this, and also drop the code, of course, uh, to the original code base. Um, so, um, without further ado, let me introduce our guests. Um, thank you so much for joining, um, Gao and, and Tan. So, uh, first, Gao, um, uh, he's a uh, research uh, scientist at the Shanghai AI Laboratory, um, and he has a PhD from the Chinese uh, University in Hong Kong. Um, and then we have uh, Pan Lu. Uh, he's a PhD candidate, right? Um, yeah, yeah. In, in, in the fourth year, I believe, and uh, from the University of California. Um, so thank you so much for joining us and uh, letting us ask you some questions and discussing your work. So um, maybe just to get to know you, um, could you maybe talk about what the topic of your thesis is um, or anything interesting you would like to share about your research? Yeah. So hi everyone, uh, this is Pan, so it's my great pleasure to attend this code event today. So I'm fourth year PhD candidate at UCLA and I'm interested in mathematical reasoning, common sense reasoning and multimodal learning. So recently, I have been working on developing large language models for uh, these domains, such as uh, medical reasoning, medical model reasoning. And I uh, appreciate the invitation from like me and, and Paul. And I would like to discuss the Lama adapter series with you. But thank you. Awesome. Nice to have you. OK, so my name is Gao Pong. I'm a research scientist at uh, Shanghai AI Lab. And my team are working on um, multimodal reasoning and uh, large language model fine tuning. Awesome. Yeah, that's exactly uh, what we want to talk about today. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, so um, maybe dive into yeah, the, the first version of Llama Adapter. Um, can you talk a little bit about the parameter efficient fine tuning? Uh, why people should care, and um, what are some applications that you see uh, where this is useful? Okay, so, so I will start first. 
<laughs> yeah, after you, you can first. Uh, so a parameter efficient fine tuning means that uh, we froze the most of the parameters and uh, only fine tune a very small portion of of parameters, and this kind of technique is becoming more and more important um, for large language model, uh, because the parameter of large language model is very huge. And when we yes, when we use current. Uh, Software like like PyTorch to to update the parameters. We need to synchronize the gradient, um, or we need to the, we we need to um, communicate between different GPU. If we update full parameters, the the communication load is very large. So it means that the communication will take most of the time during optimization. Well, for of Pact, we only up, as we only update a very small portion of parameters. The communication cost is very low. So that's the reason why PEFT is very important for large language model, and everyone should should know this kind of techniques. Yeah. So I would like to, I would like to talk about a little more about the motivation of our, our work. So uh, we have witnessed the remarkable success of large language models like GPT three and ChatGPT, uh, which benefit from being trained on extensive and high quality corpora, right? And recent work such as Stanford Apaca process fine tuning a smaller LLM such as Llama into a um, extraction following model that is more affordable compared to the original 175 billion parameter GP3. However, you know, complete fine tuning on large language model like uh, Llama remains time consuming and lacks access to meta modalities. Furthermore, it is not flexible enough to transfer um, to different downstream scenario. So, so you can imagine what if we have a parameter efficient model that introduces uh, only a limited number of learnable parameters and can easily transform multiple modalities and uh, scenarios. Right? Sounds cool. Sounds cool, right? So that's where our Lama adapter comes in. So it's a, it is a very uh, innovative solution for uh, uh, instruction following learning. Right. Yeah, that's a very good summary. And of course, um, as you said, the f as you said, the fewer parameter parameter we need to tune, the better. But of course, if we have too few, then it becomes difficult to solve the problem, and we need to find the right design. Um, mm -hmm. How to efficient how to efficiently make use of these uh, parameters? So um, maybe uh, here's a good po uh, point to uh, start to talk a little bit about the mechanics um, and zero in it attention. Um, so I'm quickly going to share uh, um, a quick image for the audience. Um, let me see how to share the screen. Right. Um, so you should see my screen now, and I'm just going to whoops um, share this. Uh, so this is I'm just reusing some image from our blog, but um, just for illustration, um, the the llama adapter is basically this in a summary so at the very core and um we have the regular transformer block that you are familiar with uh here in gray and then the purple parts is what lamb adapter modifies about the network and everything else that is not um, purple is basically frozen it's not trained so there are these two important parts this gating factor and then there's self-attention over this special prefix, or in the paper you call it adoption prompt. And uh, really what this is, is in uh, specifically in this paper, this is just basically 10 tokens. So this is a sequence of 10 tokens. And it's a prefix to the regular input of the attention layer to the sequence. right? And it's a trainable parameter. And it's going to run through self-attention exactly the same way as the regular query, but it's going to be added to the regular um, output of the attention uh, layer with a linear combination of the gating factor. So this is what you call zero init attention. And um, this is kind of the core mechanic, and could you, uh, based on this picture, 
um, explain a little bit the importance of these individual parts, this gating factor, what is zero in it, why is it important to initialize this gating factor as zero, um, to give us a little bit of a, an intuition why this is working or why this is uh, an important idea in your paper. Oh, okay. So, so first of all, uh, I think the illustration is, is quite good. It's much better. Yes, it's much better and clearer than our paper. Yeah. And, and another thing is that uh, I think you should change, maybe you should change the, the self-attention to core attention. It's, it's better because self, usually self-attention means that the, the key query value is the same. For, well, for core attention, the, the query is, is one, yes, it's, it's an RP, it's a word token and the, the key and the value is the, is like the prefix token or or, or the tokens from for from zero from the zero input. So maybe core attention is is a better name here. And so the, the why we design this this mechanism. So so to understand this, we need to know uh, so the the categories of of path approaches. So mainly there are three three categories of, of parameter efficient fine tuning. The most popular and earlier one is uh, adapter approach, and then there is a prefix tu prefix tuning approach and the reparameterization approach. So so for 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 instruction tuning of large language model from our experiment, we found Lola the reparameterization trick. The parameterization category is very good, but uh, one weakness of Lola is is unable to handle extra modality uh, because it had a, a a residual, a low rank um, interference over the frozen weight. So it's very hard to integrate uh, other modality. That's the reason we need to turn to prefix tuning approaches because for prefix tuning uh, approaches, it's very easy to add extra modality. Uh, for example, given an image, we can use a uh, uh, transformer module to turn it uh, to transform it into ten tokens. And then we can add the token. We can treat the tokens as a prefix token, and uh, and then we can uh, inject uh, image information into large language model. However, uh, in our experiment, we noticed that the original prefix tuning is not good for large language model. And because uh, because the original prefix tuning, it it simply um, concat the extra token with word tokens. It can and uh, this it can what should I say? Yes, it will change the distribution of attention because you add ten random initiated tokens. And another so so this disruption is very bad for large language model because you when we disturb the large language model in the first layer. This disturbation will be exaggerated as we go deeper. So, from our experiment, from our observation, if we use original prefix tuning, the loss will increase um, a lot in the beginning. Yeah. So, so for example, the the lama seven billion loss is is about one point five from the paper. Yeah. If we just uh, uh, append some extra tokens, prefix tokens, the loss will increase to fifty. So basically, the gradient is the gradient norm is very large, and it's very hard to tune this this mechanism. So uh, to solve this problem, we designed two mechanisms. The first is we use two softmax. So previously, so in prefix tuning, uh, the, so they apply softmax among the concatenation of prefix token and the word tokens. In our approach, we we split the the attention. So basically, uh, for basically we have one softmax for word. And prefix tokens, and another softmax for word to word soft to word word tokens. So we have two softmax. If we split the softmax, we can we can treat the prefix tokens as a core attention as as shown in this paper, and uh, and uh, then we add a zero initiated uh, gating function, and it means that in the beginning stage we didn't add any uh, extra perturbations over large language model. The loss is very small. And during the <coughs> optimize during the training process, the gating loss so so the zero gating will increase gradually to incorporate extra knowledge, yes, like a zero token, like a zero knowledge, uh, yeah, or instruction tuning knowledge. So basically, that's the design principle of Lama adapter. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a very good summary. And you also hit on a, on a few details there that are very important. Uh, of course, the gating factor, yes. Um, uh, also, you, you said, yeah, maybe this should be called something else because you pointed out, actually, we're only uh, incorporating the key and the value, right? Um, yes, the key value and the query are different, so call attention is a better thing. Right, right. Um, so this is one of the subtle differences between like the regular prefix tuning, right? Um, because only the keys and the values get this uh, special um, uh, get get this get this prefix right. So can you again maybe um, so this is was one of the maybe hard to understand parts about the paper is like um, why is the query excluded? Um, Oh, so you mean why we why we split between prefix uh, prefix token and word token, right? Yeah, I mean, I meant like um, for example, it's easy to see in the uh, in the here in the in the in this um, equation, right? So the the prefix is not included in the query. Um, hey, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mean why prefix is not included in the in the query? Right. So as a, as a as a contrast to the prefix tuning, cl like classical prefix tuning, where we concatenate um, uh, at the okay. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, so you remind me that uh, that's also a difference between prefix tuning. So basically, for for prefix. For prefix tuning, the, the, so the query part is is the prefix plus the plus the word tokens. Well, for our method, yeah, the query part is only the word tokens. Mm. Right. So this this was just something that you you tried and and it it, it worked well, right? Um, it's just what you found most natural, I guess, right? Maybe we want to add more diverse information because yeah because if you if you share if you treat if you put the prefix token into the query, uh, so so the prefix token shared between different layers, mm. so the parameter, the capacity of this kind of approach is is very small. So so that that's the, yeah yes so so that means summarize for prefix tuning approaches they only add. Uh, the prefix tokens in the first layer, and because they take because the query is the prefix token plus word token, so uh, so basically the capacity is, is very small. We can only inject information in the first layer. So in our approaches, uh, we can inject uh, different information. Yes, in, in all layers. Yeah, basically we have uh, take llama seven billion for example. It's uh, a llama seven billion is uh, is about uh, thirty two layers. So we have thirty two different prefix tokens yeah we, we want to increase the the capacity that, 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 that's the yeah mm. design that's why we designed this architecture right 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 yeah yeah i think i think that's 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 pretty clear um thanks a lot um just a quick reminder to the to the audience like you can ask questions in the chat and i'm going to monitor it so uh, don't be shy if it's going too fast or if if there is any detail you feel like is uh, not clear, please. Um, uh, we have all the power here to explain everything. So, yes. Um, awesome. Uh, let me share my screen. So, um, yeah. So, I guess um, there. Are, so, there are all of these details coming together, and there are subtle differences to previous methods. Like, uh, I was just wondering, like, on a high level, like, what have you tried before? Um, what has failed? How did you come up with this? Um, did you just know it will work? Because uh, I also see, um, I think, Gao, you have worked with adapters before um, in the in the uh, image domain as well. So maybe you can just quickly, um, yeah, say how how easy was this uh, idea um, from idea to it working. Okay, I think it's it's very, 
yes, it takes a lot of time to to yes to to create this idea. So so basically, we start with prefix tuning. Yeah. So so when alpaca, yeah. So when I saw when I first saw alpaca, uh, they, they data set they, they didn't release the training code, and and also when they release the training code, they use hugging face uh, tr the transformer. It's very complex so basically i write everything from from scratch to yes to to fine tune uh llama with with alpaca data yeah so the first idea i try is prefix tuning but but i observed the loss is is very large and so so basically why why train prefix why fine tune with pre prefix tuning and uh, Yes, and uh, and ask questions with the yes, and I query the the fine tuned llama uh, and llama model. I found the response is very bad. Yes, then it takes some time to yes. Then, then what I want to do is to lower down the, the loss in the beginning stage. Yeah, after some trials, trial and errors. Yes, I, I found th this idea basically uh, zero initiated attention. So I think this idea has been motivated. By previous, a lot of previous methods has been created in in transformer uh, is transform in, into the stable training of transformer and visual transformer and also stable diffusion. And so, for example, um, so so there is a very famous paper called uh, ReZero. Yeah, maybe it's it's the first paper which can train transformer up to one thousand layers. The, their idea is to add a zero gating and in the residual branch so that they can train transformer uh, in a very in a ten thousand so that they can train ten thousand layer transformer. Yes. So another uh, paper is is in vision transformer. So so my my team mainly work on on, on computer vision. So when we train visual transformers. Uh, for for large vision transformer, the training process is very unstable. So usually we add a very s small value to the residual branch. It can stable the training. And uh, so and the last thing is stable diffusion. The control net, yes, the control net of stable diffusion. So basically they introduce zero convolution. Uh, their motivation is that they want to add an adapter uh, part so that they can control the image generation process of st of stable diffusion uh, with any modality like edge modality yes or, or post modality. So basically, when they add the extra part and they add a zero convolution so that in the beginning stages uh, the training st the, the training is very stable. So motivated by all these previous approaches. I, I found I yes I, I just uh, come on this idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my answer. Yeah, it yeah it just happens through yeah uh, a lot of exploration and curiosity. That's awesome. Yeah, that's how research should work. Um, and uh, yeah, so Miles in our chat wanted to know the paper you mentioned uh, about training with the anti-layer transformer. Um, do you have a reference for him here? Uh, I think the name is ReZero, maybe, because I read the paper two or three years ago. Uh, yes, ReZero. Uh, ReZero is all you need, uh, fast convergence. Uh, ReZero is all, is all you need, fast convergence at large depths. Yeah, as the paper is published at, uh, uh, three years before. <laughs> it's a very old paper. They, they tr only train a uh, 120 layer transformer, not 1000 layer. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But basically, they, they, they train one, 100 layer transformer at uh, yeah, three years before. Nice. Okay. Yeah. He found it awesome. Thank you. And uh, uh, also, like, um, so the so the idea of adapters, um, of course, the way it's formulated, it um, can be applied to any model, right? Uh, why did you uh, choose Llama? Um, um, yeah, it, was it just um, because it, it was recently re, uh, released, or any other specific reason? Okay, because uh, because we find the the Llama model is very is very interesting. Yeah, because we can, for example, yeah, we can uh, we can turn it into a chatbot, and also uh, it can yeah. Uh, yeah, we can we, we can use Llama to do science QA. So basically, we want to we want to test uh, whether whether Llama can understand image modality. So th I think because Llama is very popular, so we we choose so we our, our full team 
yes, it's, um, yeah, focused on, on research concerning the, the adaptation of LAMA. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Um, yeah, um, why don't we talk a little bit about the second part of the paper as well? So these were just like sort of the technical core contributions. Um, but the big part is, of course, also the question, can the model also um, uh, be multimodal, right? And so you explored that. Um, do you want to quickly maybe explain, like, how can we, taking a language model, how can we incorporate visual information as well? So, um, you know, for the audience, the uh, question would be, you know, can we talk to a model, give it an image as a context, and let it solve some tasks, ask a question of image. How do we incorporate uh, images, visual uh, con content, into a language model that was trained on language? Um, can you talk about that? Okay, so so can you share the, the image in your blog just now? <laughs> yes, yeah. because it's a very good image. That's a very good idea. Um, of course. Um, yes, so... Uh, actually, do we have, um, maybe we should look at the image in the paper, is that maybe better? I think your, the, the block in your image is better, right? <laughs> okay. so, so in the future, maybe we will polish our paper yeah, according to the, yes, according to the photos in this block. Right, um, I'm not sure, but though, uh, if we... You mean this blog, right? Yeah, yeah, this blog. The image you showed just now. Um, you mean the one initially here? Yes, scroll down, scroll down. Yeah. Here, right? Yeah, 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 this, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, just, okay, yeah. so, yeah. So, so basically the motivation of Llama Adapter is to provide a, a unified approach for, for language instruction fine-tuning for chat fine-tuning, and also for, for multimodal information injection. So why we say it's, it's a unified approach? Because, uh, yeah, it's, uh, basically if you understand this image we talk about just now, we, 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 yeah, yeah, the prefix here, it's, it's, it's a static prefix. Yeah, basically means that it's a, it's a parameter. So, mm -hmm. so this is how we use Llama adapter for instruction fine-tuning. Of 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 llama, yeah. Uh, so so to in to yeah to and to to inject uh, image information. So basically, uh, take take an image. We will transform the image into the shape of, of ten token or or twenty tokens. The, so the shape is same as the the prefix. So, but, so basically, we turn image into a dynamic uh, dynamic prefix, and uh, and we simply add add the dynamic prefix with this static prefix. And the fine tuning, and, and yes, and then we we just uh, fine tune the, the language models. Then we can, uh, then we can inject. Uh, we can we can incorporate uh, image modality. Right. So the yeah, so I yeah yeah please go ahead. No, please. Thank yeah. you. So I have a, a comment. So in our Lama Adapter V two, so we uh, use the. Uh, single term extracting data from GB3, uh, GBD4, and we also use the captioning data from uh, the COCO data set. So our model have the abilities to do multi-modality uh, reasoning and chatbot function. So our model is very flexible to uh, include uh, different modalities. So for now, we our model support the image modality, and in the future, we are considering uh, to support the other modalities like audio or videos. So that's our plans. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. And, and you said that it's really as easy as to um, encode the image. Um, and then you, you said you actually just add the, the, the regular prefix uh, and the encoded pre prefix, so to say. You just add them together in a vector, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really powerful. That's really. That's really nice. Um, um, great. So um, let me check. What I wanted to ask was um, um, right. So in, in the paper, you uh, evaluated 
um, the, the capabilities of the multimodal uh, model using a question answering task, right? So I can maybe quickly show that here. Um, so where is a good image about that? Here. Right, so simple um, question answering with a contact with the image as a context. So some of these um, data samples, they have images as context. And the, the model has to basically answer the question or solve the task in a multiple choice fashion. Um, can you quickly talk about how this is, um, how this question and how all of this is presented to the network? How it's supposed to uh, give the answer and how do you evaluate um, the, yeah, the, the accuracy of the model here? How does, it, okay. uh, or how does the evaluation work, basically? Okay, so maybe Pan can give more explanation here as you are the, the, the yeah, the, the, the author of Science QA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so I'd like to give more uh, the background of the, the set, uh, evaluation data set, Science QA. So Science QA is science question answering. So it is a multimodal, multi choice uh, question answering and covers um, multiple contexts and uh, uh, scientific domains, for example. So there are different uh, image contexts uh, in the data set. So the image context could be a nature image, a diagram, a chart, a table, and a plot. So uh, the visual information is very diverse. So that so it requires our model can have a high level uh, visual reasoning ability. Also, uh, as I said, uh, our data set covers uh, diverse uh, scientific domains like uh, social science, nature science, and uh, language science. So uh, our model need to have uh, to need to be trained on high quality instruction. Um, uh, data. So instead of just the test of VQA, so in the VQA, maybe we just need to understand the uh, general information in the image. So there's uh, and the most of the image context is in the format of nature image. So uh, instead, uh, uh, the science QA poses new challenges for the uh, uh, language models or multimodal uh, uh, visual language models uh, in understanding diverse types of images and also need to understand the different. Uh, domain specific knowledge and also need to have a good uh, instruction following to adapt to different scenarios of queries, right? So Gopal uh, will give more details about how we evaluate our model in this task. Mm, oh, okay, so, so basically we have the ground truth answer. Yes, we compare with the ground truth answer. If it's, it's, if it's correct, then yeah, we, we give it to yeah, then, then we just increase the scores. Yeah, so, so finally we calculate, um, we calculate the correct answer, the correct answer, the, yes, example, divided by the, the, the mm -hmm. all, yeah, divided by the whole numbers. Yeah, then, then we get the, the accuracy of this model. Right. Yeah, nope. I, I know, yeah, just, yeah, so I would like to emphasize the effectiveness of our Lama adapter. So just a we, uh, just, uh, introducing 1.4 million parameters, our model achieves the state of art um, in uh, existing models, uh, compared to existing models. So our model is very powerful in the real downstream test. <coughs> the science is uh, one of these uh, benchmark uh, examples, and we also evaluate our model in different uh, tasks. And in our V2, so we have uh, image captioning, uh, we evaluate our model in image captioning task and some chatbot, chatbot task. So our model is very flexible to transfer to different uh, modalities, uh, tasks, uh, and uh, yeah, that's all. Yep, um, awesome. Um, I uh, also wanted to ask a specific question about the results. Um, so let's quickly uh, look at a table in the paper, and then we will move on to, to V2, which, also, which is also exciting. So uh, let's uh, quickly, so, um, yeah, so in the, um, so you talked about the evaluation, and here in the table uh, two, 
it's basically summarized. Here are the different uh, categories of the different questions, right? And uh, this is basically the accuracy, right? So 100% is the best. Um, I was wondering, so here the, the bottom two rows, uh, so for the audience, um, the this first row here is the Llama adapter without multimodality, right? It's only um, you know, the text, it doesn't include the image. And this one is right. with the uh, visual context as well. So I was wondering, like, um, so these results are great. They compete with really large models as well here. Um, but also, like, in, in some cases, like, the difference is not that high, right? And I was wondering, does that suggest that um, the, if the image context in the data samples, is that uh, really significant? Like, it, it can, uh, um, is it important for the model to, to be able to answer the question to, to also look at the image? Um, I was wondering, like, does this have an impact on these results as well? Yeah, so uh, I can first answer the question. Uh, so in, in the size two is a multimodal uh, uh, question answering data set, and uh, we have to know that not all the questions uh, okay. comes with the image context because right. in the real world, we, we cannot always have the image context uh, right. uh, coming with the question. And so, uh, uh, I, uh, so there's about uh, 30, 40 percent of the question comes with the image. And the image uh, have different uh, uh, context types. Some are natural images, some are diagrams, some are plots. And uh, we have to see not all the images pre uh, provide the critical information for price answering. Some images just give uh, give the background information or as a complementary information for the question answering. So with us, is a kind of visual image. Uh, uh, a good enough model can also answer this question. So, uh, so this is another reason we choose uh, science QA because we hope our model is generalized enough to different questions with different formats, domains, and uh, context. So that's uh, that, that's the reason uh, why we choose the science QA data set. Uh, do you have anything to comment? Uh, no. <laughs> Great. No, I, yeah, I think yeah, that's a straightforward answer. Yeah, maybe yeah. Um, I could have guessed that as well. Yeah, yeah thanks for answering that. Um, let's see if we have some interesting questions from the audience. Um, yeah, so MTW asks, how does the use of self-attention prefix modified in transformer block Llama adapter improve the performance of natural language processing tasks compared to the traditional self-attention mechanism? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess, uh, yeah, do, do you want to address uh, the question? Um, I think we can also... Oh, can you... say... Yeah. yeah. So, uh, can you say it again? Why, uh, um, your yeah. Your question? Yeah, so the oh, question... How does the use of attention prefix... Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how does the use of... How does the use of self-attention prefix modified in transform block language processing task? Um, yeah, I guess this is more like a, a general question about like the approach in this paper. So maybe MTW missed uh, the beginning of the talk or so. Um, maybe we can come back to the question later. It's um, Apologies, MTW. Maybe it, it's not very clear what you were asking. We we will try to come back to your um, question, or maybe you can even cl clarify in the meantime as well. Um, Tim asks, looking at visual QA uh, task using the adapter proposed here, do you reckon swapping clip for better encoder will introduce a huge accuracy jump? Right. So he's asking, is there a better um yeah image um, okay. and yeah yeah that's, that's, that's a very good, good question so here we use we only use clip and um, base model 
Yeah, we, we try, but but, uh, but but actually we didn't do experiment on, on viral QA, on science QA. We did experiment on, on image captioning, cocoa image captioning. We found that, uh, yeah, when we replace clip base with clip large, the performance, yeah, the image caption performance can be improved a, lo a lot. Yeah, but uh, but when we change the the but but yeah, but when we when we change VIT large to VIT huge, the, the performance did, didn't improve. So so basically, that's my that's my answer. Uh, a better yes, the definitely a, a better image encoder can increase the performance, but uh, expanded uh, yeah maybe at the at the the, the large model. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So. Uh, sorry. But another paper called called Believe Way Two, they found that uh, uh, yeah, in their paper uh, they found white white giant or white huge is better than than white large. Yeah, but uh, in our paper uh, we found white large is a is the best one. And when you yeah when you ex when you yeah when you increase the model capacity, uh, the performance did, did the performance is constant or didn't improve. The reason may be that. Uh, uh, the the multi model data set we tried is very small. Yeah, we only tried it on on cocoa captioning. Right. Is that my answer? Yep. Yeah, we can maybe uh, talk uh, more about that also in the context of the the conversion as well. Um, yeah. So I want to go to that because like. While I was like reading the, studying the paper, implementing it, and training, <laughs> you were already hard at work at version two, and uh, yeah. So maybe um, could you give a like a quick summary of like what are the shortcomings of the uh, the the adapter ver uh, model we just talked about? Uh, what are the short shortcomings? What are you trying to address with the upgraded uh, second version um, of the paper? Okay. So, so I I see that MTW is asking another question. Do do I need to answer this question first, or yes, or introduce? Yeah, if you think, yeah. uh, if you think that's uh, fitting, yeah, please please go ahead. A bit of topic. Do you work with elliptic curves? Uh, the second question is more important for me. A bit of topic. Do you work with curve? Uh, uh, sorry, actually, I, I don't understand the question. Do you work with elliptic curves for generating numbers for llama based model? Uh, Pat, do you understand the question? Uh, yeah, no, I'm not confused with these questions. Well. So maybe uh, MTW can give us more information, specific information to your question. Thanks. Or oh, anyone else can explain uh, the question? more understandable okay so, so to yeah to maybe to be clear like there is no um randomness like in like somehow uh encoded into the network it's completely deterministic right it's only sort of random when we sample um the output um uh, from the distribution of the network so when we generate an answer then there's randomness because we sample from the distribution maybe this historic his question is going in that direction um, I'm not sure. Oh, actually, we use greedy decoding. So basically, there is no randomness uh, during the yeah the decoding of language model. We use greedy greedy decoding. Yeah. Ah, uh, greedy decoding. Okay, then even yeah, then it's then there is even no randomness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, actually, because the answer is very short, so so basically it's, it's just chosen from A, B, C, D. <laughs> so the yeah. randomness didn't, uh, yeah, influence the the, the, the result. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a good question uh, from Tim. So sorry. Yeah. Okay, so so I think there's a good question from Tim. Um. So in science, today, uh. Did we just remove the depth layer if the question and don't have the images? Oh, okay, so that that's a good question. In sense, Q, so so your question is uh, as Pan explained said just now. Uh, the for size QA uh, some image some examples do not have uh, images. So do I remove the adapter layer? So basically, uh, yeah. 
uh, okay, that's a very good question. So in our implementation, so during training, um, if the yeah, if the if the example do not have an image, we will uh, we will generate a a pseudo image. So basically, it's an image uh, all with all zeros. Yeah. So that's my uh, that's my um, that's my answer. Yeah. You just uh, add add zeros to the prefix, then you can. Then, then you can do the inference without uh, images. Yeah. Very, very good question. I think I will update the, my paper to review the, the, this one. Yeah. Nice. I, I haven't even thought about this. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep keep uh, uh, sending these questions. This is really interesting. Uh, also gives the authors maybe new ideas. Who knows? <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Do we want to? I, I find the version two really interesting. Do we want to want to switch um, to that? We can we can still address like uh, questions if you guys have questions about version one, version two doesn't matter, right? Like we can then type into. Um. Oh okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, okay. So I'm I'm going to talk about uh, the version two of of our uh, adapter. Yeah. Yeah. So so to to begin with, I I want to. Say some yeah. Say say some yes. Disadvantage of of Llama adapter we want. So so basically, uh, I, I, we need to compare the the training cost and the inference cost of Llama adapter we want with with, with Lola. Yeah. So we, we didn't compare with prefix tuning because prefix tuning cannot be be even cannot be trained. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So so we only need to compare with, with Lola because. Uh, I think only only Lola can yes can can achieve good results on on large language model fine tuning. So so we need to compare uh, the the training cost, the basically the fine tuning cost and the uh, inference cost uh, with Lola. So so in our experiment and also in the blog of uh, of yes of 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 of, of Latin, uh, yeah basically uh, we found that uh, um, our pre training our fine tuning cost. Is is a bit lower or comparable with with Lola, yeah. So that 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 means that uh, the comp the pre training cost is same, yes, or, or better, uh, a bit better. But uh, the inference cost of Lama adapter is very bad because for each layer we need to perform co attention with the prefix tokens separately. Although the computation theoretical the theoretical computation cost is very small. But uh, for large language models, the redundancy increase a, a lot. Yes, so basically means that uh, a Llama adapter will make the inference of of language model uh, much slower during during yeah d d during decoding. Yeah, so uh, so uh, yeah, that. Okay. Uh, Pang, you, you go ahead. Yeah, great. So uh, I have some uh, additional comments. So why we propose the Lama Adapted V2. So first, our model is uh, Lama Adapted V2 is larger, right? So the original one, we just have uh, 1 1.2 or 1 1.8, depends on different tasks we are working on. So the original one just have a, a little bit smaller uh, learnable parameters. Uh, and instead, in the V2, we augment the Lama Adapter by unlocking more learnable parameters such as known bias and steer. So finally, we have uh, uh, 14 million additional parameters on top of uh, 65 billion Lama adapters. So our model is larger, and our model also uh, is unlocking unlocking more abilities such as uh, chat voice, a uh, chat function. And also, uh, we have to say that uh, the original Lama adapter is primarily a language instruction model or a closed set vision language model, right? So uh, instead, our V2 is a more powerful visual, uh, visual instruction model. So that is jointly trained on the captioning model uh, data and uh, instruction data. Uh, and uh, I, want, I would like to emphasize that one of the largest updates, upgrades in V2 is the chatbot function. So we train uh, the V2 model using 80,000 conversational data con uh, connected by ShareGPT2. So as you can see, our model is very good at the uh, generating, uh, con having a con conversation with the user. So that's a uh, old. Uh, that's this. That's a very important uh, features in our V2. 
And so, um, so to summarize, you, you basically said you had to somehow add more parameters um, because because the the performance actually compared to other models or on other data sets was um, kind of challenging to achieve. And so, but um, what we discussed previously was that we want to make the fine tuning as efficient as, as possible. So. Um, I believe in total by enabling the bias vectors in the network and the normalization uh, layers, you added uh, 5 million, right? So that's 1.2 million parameters and then plus 5 million parameters. Does that still count as efficient? What, what do we, um, um, like, just, just to understand, like, what, what cost do we pay here, right? Is this significant or, or, or is it really not noticeable in practice? Okay, so I, I think, uh, so, so basically, let me, let me clarify something. So the design principle of, of V2 is that uh, we want to make the training faster and also inference faster. So that's the reason in, in, in V2 when we fine tune um, language models, yeah, we didn't add the gating part. We only fine tune the bias part and the norm part, so that uh, uh, yeah, so that the training is much faster and also the inference is much faster because because for inference we didn't add any extra computation. Yes, so that's the reason why inference is faster. For for tra for train fine tuning, it's also faster than Lola uh, because everyone knows that uh, in Lola they they have a uh, yes they need to com they need to compute the the, the low rank branch yes actually. Uh, so, so, so basically, the motivation of Lama W two is that uh, we, 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 yeah, we just change the gating part to the skill bias norm part, so that we can make the the fine tuning and uh, inference more efficient and uh, and yes, more efficient than Lola and other approaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so related to that, Sebastian has uh, a question. So, how how did you? Um, so, if the if we're curious whether more parameters help, right, we could also have just extended the prefix, right, the prefix as a sequence, we could have used more tokens um, to have more capacity there. Uh, did you try that? And, and why did you go for the, um, the bias vectors, for example? Uh, is there some experimentation that you did? Yes, actually, I didn't try try that. So, so b b because because if from my experiment, I observe that uh, adding the gating uh, gating part will significantly slow down the the inference and the, and the pre training. Yeah. So so basically, I turn to the to tune the bears and the, and the skill norm so that we we want to make the training and the inference um, better. So th that's the motivation. It's 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 not about the uh, performance part, yeah. So from my observation, the performance of gating, uh, yes, of of Lama W one and uh, and compared with with bias tuning, it's it's similar. Yes, the the response from from fine tune models is 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 similar. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the the training cost and the inference cost is is much better in is improved. Yeah. It's more from the the yes the training cost part the the training and the inference cost. Mm. So the, yeah okay so it's actually less you're saying it's less costly this way that's what motivated you in the first place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Let me check my notes. Um. Right. Another thing was I think you mentioned that. Um, in the paper that when you uh, generated sequences, they were generally shorter and less detailed, right? So you also wanted to address this problem, right? Um, yeah. So is this, um, it, so there are other parts in, in, in V2 that, that kind of um, were incorporated. Right now we've only talked about the bias, uh, the addition of the uh, parameters, but is this addition of parameters sort of are responsible for the improvement also in like the length of the text that it outputs the responses. Um, yeah, responses. Or is it the other two that we are going to talk about as well? 
Yes, I think we need to talk about the other other parts. So so basically, for the best tuning part, we we, we just focus on on the yes on instrument tuning and the, and the chat and the, and the dialogue tuning. So it's it's pure NLP. Yeah, yes. So to to talk about the other reason why we introduce best tuning, we need to talk about the multimodality part. Yes, exactly. Um. So um. To maybe introduce that so you uh, I think in the paper you explained that you did an experiment where you trained llama um, oh, so fine tuned llama only on the coco captioning data set right and you saw that yeah. basically the instruction following capabilities were sort of lost um, or deteriorate so you did start from the instruction tuned llama and then you you switched basically the task to image captioning right um yeah. yeah can you quickly talk about there what the observations were oh okay so so for coco captioning part yeah so so first we need to know what's the the data set of co caption basically it's the image and also paired with a very short and a concise explanation about this image so first so first we transform the image text pair into a yes just just into into a into a in yeah, into a new new version. So basically, given an image, we add a query. The query is fixed. It's just explain the image. So so basically, given a given an image, yes, we, we just uh, extract the tokens and uh, add it to the prefix prefix part. So as as we explain in Lama that we want, and then the query is fixed. It's just uh, describes the image, and then we we just add the ground truth and um, capturing data set. Then we fine tune the, the then we fine tune the data set using the the gating function. Then we, we we can turn llama into a into a captioning model. So during inference and give a and give an image and also a query called describes the image. It can generate a very short and uh, but but correct but accurate explanation about the image. So that's that's the image captioning part. So the problem here is the. The explanation is very short because because your your because you, you in your data set the 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 caption is, is very is very short yeah so that's 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 a, that's caused by the influenced by the data set and and also this model can only understand one query is that, that that is explain the image when we ask other queries the model will just uh, yes also some some rubbish sentence we are unable to understand so that's the problem with image captioning basically uh, it's it has it has no instruction following multi multimodal instruction following ability and also the answer is very short uh, so so basically the quality is much worse than gpt4 the demo or the multimodal demo of gpt4 so we want to improve this one so that's the motivation uh, for llama dev v2 exactly and so you basically had to find a way to to train the adapter model in a way that it, it yeah. performs well in, in both places. So how um so let's quickly look um at the method that you came up with. So I'm going to share the screen because I think it would be useful here. So um let me find this real quick. Yeah. Right. So Given that's a very yeah, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger here. So given everything that we have available now, we have the the uh, multimodal captioning data with images that we need to project um, into the the adapter space, right? So if you don't code, we have this. We have the uh, zero init attention. We have the um, normalization and bias vectors that are unlocked uh, and then um, also for the instruction for the for the for instruction tuning part the zero attention so we have all these parameters and we have these kind of two tasks or domains that we want to perform well on um, and you chose to do a special joint training on these two data sets um, but you chose to group the parameters and do the training in a disjoint way so that um so ca can you talk a little bit about what this means here why um why we need to separate sort of the trainable parameters into the two group and why joining them 
it, uh, training them disjointly helps separate the tasks and perform well on, on both. Um, because I think it's a so, you know, idea. Yeah, yeah. That, that's very hard. Yes, that, this part is a, is a bit complex. So yeah. basically for capturing data, yes, it can, yes, it can align uh, image with, with large language model. So the problem is the answer is very small and also the query is fixed. We can't change the query. For instruction data, so so we can ask different questions and get a, get a very long response. So, so basically when we join between these, these two models, uh, we can, yes, we can, the, the parameters can have two ability, basically understand the image understanding ability and also, uh, and also um, instruction following ability. So when we join between the, these two abilities, uh, the, the models can, yes, the models can simultaneously understand the image and, the, uh, and the also arbitrary query and also generate a long response. So basically, that's the motivation of joint training. But during joint training, we observe one, one problem. Because capturing data is, is much larger than instruction data. Uh, capturing data is very short. It's very easy to collect, as you know, for, for live file B file billing. And the recently proposed data common, they, they, can, they can create 12 billion image text pair data. Yeah. So compared with capturing data, instruction data is very hard to get, and uh, the, the, the data volume is very small. So if we, if we joint train these two data sets, yes, so basically all parameters will be, will be biased towards the capturing data part. Yes, so basically when we train the model, um, basically the, the capturing data will dominate the, the optimization part. Uh, so, so when we test these, these models, the, it, it can only also up to, it can only generate a short, short explanation, description of the, of the image. So that's the reason we, we separate the, the parameters. So basically for if, if the data is coming from image text pair, we optimize the projection part and the early, early gating part. Yes. And uh, for, for instruction data, we only optimize the, the, the late zero, the late gating part and also the norm skill bears of the language, language models. So by doing this, we can, yes, the, 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 the trained models can simultaneously uh, answer, uh, yes, answer images conditional, yeah, answer, answer arbitrary query conditional on the image and generate a long and long response, long and uh, descriptive response. So that's the motivation. Let's check if there are uh, questions here. Yeah, so this is, yeah, this is was, uh, yeah, I found this a very creative um, uh, solution for the problem you faced, right? Yeah, very straightforward, but yeah. Um, yeah kind of difficult to decide what, what to do here, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's really uh, nice. So um, maybe in the interest of time, um would you like to talk about um let me just ask you like what what um what other parts of the paper would you like to talk about you think is like interesting or important to know here um maybe about uh how you evaluate this or maybe also the part about um experts um if you want to they choose like what would like to the audience to know um, about the other parts. Okay, uh, so I think the the X part is also quite quite interesting because uh, in our paper we only use Coco data set, which is a very small scale image text text pair, so it's unable to to cover uh, is unable to understand, for example, like OCR and the table understanding. Yeah. So, so basically, we introduce extra expert. Uh, so here we just use some expert like, like Lama W1 and uh, and some OCR system which can transform the image into some structure. Yeah, some structure sentences, and we use these structure sentences as a context of uh, yes of, of the of the language models. Basically, the language model get information from two parts: the the image part and also the, the context part. So, yeah. So by, by adding this this yeah by add, by adding this this model yes our model can so the, the response of model model is more accurate yeah, yeah so, so if we, 
principal part, uh, basically the models will, will hallucinate over the, the image description. So the, 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 the generated sentence is, 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 is basically it's just some, some kind of hallucination. Yeah. So Pam, you can add more explanation. Yes, so uh, although our model have shown uh, the primary promising results on uh, several tasks, uh, but we also find that uh, uh, most of the language model, in, including us, uh, highly depends on the quality of the extracting data, right? So uh, as we already say, the kind of image caption data, COCO data, uh, is not very uh, high quality. So we are also plan to, uh, we are plan to uh, improve or polish the description in the COCO, uh, COCO data by using the GPT-4. So in that way, uh, because we have more high quality of the training data, so our model can perform better. So that's uh, one of the direction in our future work. Right. And so um, just for um, uh, general as, as a summary, like you can, so basically what you're saying, you could, um, incorporate an arbitrary amount of experts um, and like basically uh, use them as a query of another data source you could um, then encode that into the uh, into the prompt into the prefix itself and use that always as context to use as, as much context from as many experts as you want um, yeah that, that's that's really cool I think this will become more and more important as we query and incorporate um, different data sources, right? Because the, the model also is like the retraining phase is very expensive, right? So we only do it like once, and then there is some drop off of information. But like, of course, the world evolves, the new information is there. And if we can use other experts to incorporate more context, um, yeah, that, I think that's very interesting. Um, so I'm not sure if this is like what you thought about, but um, that's my interpretation as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, also, what I was wondering is like uh, when we evaluate the quality of um, the model uh, that we trained here, uh, adapter, for example, uh, what are the methods? Um, that are kind of interesting in terms of like the quality of the output because like of course we can use humans to do that i'm sure but it's expensive and in your paper you've um you've also just fed the answers to uh gpt4 right or chat gpt um sorry no it was chat gpt4 so um yeah can you talk about that is that like common practice is this is this just sounds very um uh, Instant, right? Like, is this something we should do, or is it just kind of like a, a, a cheap way because we don't know what else to do? So you mean how to evaluate the the model? Yeah, yeah. So so you have a section in the paper where you actually do that, right? So you want to know what is the uh, you want to rate different the, the output of different models. You have a voting system, right? So. Um, maybe maybe just talk about that, like how that works, or like why this is something we, yeah. So I think in this paper we only evaluate uh, the yes, we, we didn't evaluate the response of the multimodality part. We only evaluated the, the response of uh, instruction following. So basically, uh, yeah. So 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 the evaluation is a GP four evaluation is proposed by by the Vicuna team. So basically, they generate a response from from our yes from from your system from our system, and then we we get a, so so basically they collect eighty questions yeah eighty questions, and then then they they generate they, they get the response from Chat GPT, and also they and also we get the result from from our models. Then we ask GPT four to yeah to rank the performance to yeah to just to to rank which one is better. Yes, so, so that's called GPT-4 uh, score. We, we use this to, to evaluate uh, the instruction following ability of our model. Uh, yes, but uh, actually, uh, recently we, we were noticed that the GPT-4 evaluation is biased towards the, the first response. So basically, it will always rank the first response better than the second one. 
So, so that's the reason we are going to update the papers. So basically, um, we just evaluate the GPT-4 score twice. We put our model first, and then, and, and then put the chat GPT model response first. We just sum the, the yes the, the two evaluations to get the, the final value. So we will update the, the paper soon. Yeah. So so because in our paper we 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 just uh, yes we just put our models over chat GPT. So from the so from our evaluation. And the uh, the relative score of our model is is better than ChatGPT. Yes, but uh, but when we turn yeah, inside we got the GPT four. Okay, yes, but uh, but when we change the pos position, our our score, our yes, so the score of our model is uh, is about uh, ninety seven percent of ChatGPT. When we average is the yes, when we average the the two part, we get ninety nine point five percent of of ChatGPT basically means that uh, the the answer uh, the answer of of uh, llama llama adapter sixty five billion is is quite similar with ChatGPT yes but uh, yes but when we look into the the eighty questions we found that the coding ability and the math ability of llama is is much worse than than ChatGPT yes so I think that's a very important part to improve. Uh, Lama adapter because the base uh, to improve Lama because the the base ability of the base mathematical and uh, programming ability of Lama is is much worse than ChatGPT. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, evaluation is uh, always a good question, a good point, and uh, open to research. Uh, so the reason why we choose GPT four for the evaluation because recent work has shown that GPT four evaluation is more consistent. Uh, uh, than human beings, so so we choose the uh, GP four, and as Garvin said, uh, we ha we notice the position bias, so we are going to propose a more robust evaluation, and uh, we are also open to the suggestion of feedback from community community to improve the evaluation uh, metrics. Maybe we can propose a more uh, solid uh, evaluation metric. To have uh, more failure comparisons of different models. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I think uh, these are very good points, and I'm also like interested in learning about yeah better ways to to evaluate that. I think it's very important. Um, and uh, yeah, so with that, I would like to, um, so the meeting is getting a bit long, uh, but it was definitely super valuable to hear your insight and, and, and how this all came together. I want to give the audience uh, like one more chance to pose some questions. Um, and uh, I also wanted to um, uh, show you another project as, as, uh, as we're finishing up here um, that uh, maybe our audience finds interesting if they want to get into Llama uh, fine tuning or even pre training. We have some uh, interesting uh, projects here. So um, please, if you have any remaining questions um, or ideas for future work, please drop them in the chat. We have a big question here from Tim. So let's quickly break it down. Um, I did not know, he says that uh, I did not know that Ad Adapter V2 was released. A time to read, yeah. So um, uh, it's very recent. So yeah, uh, I wonder whether um, you did some. Did you use some neg negative mining for some extra training data? Uh, some quick thought idea. He has uh, two ideas here. For example, generating instruction that is un unanswerable without an image, then generate respective a respective answer to it. Um, so that you can generate many seed prompts using GPT three or four, um, and then the second idea would be to switch switching up the unrelated images to the, uh, of to the question image captioning find the furthest away embedding to the current one, mm -hmm. and then generate the negative response uh, via Ch a GPT three. Mm. Does okay. Um, so, in terms of negative mining, um, do you have any like 
comments about that? Is this uh, does this make sense in this context here? Pan, do you, do you have any comments? <laughs> yeah, so I think these two questions are a little bit complex. So maybe we can keep in touch uh, after this event. We may have more uh, clear explanation to these two questions. Yeah. yeah that, that makes sense. I mean, these are quite. Um, I mean, these are quite concrete uh, ideas, I guess, or suggestions. So I think, yeah, it, it might be worth a try. Um, let's maybe connect after, um, yeah, after the, the event. Um, Luca is coming on stage. Ooh, something yeah. else is happening. <laughs> no, no, it's just uh, to to say goodbye. It's not. Uh, uh, let me see. Yeah. So it was super insightful. I learned a metric ton of things. So thanks for being so open and sharing all the ins and outs. Um, I think we all come out uh, with a uh, lot of insight and a ton of ideas to, uh, to try things out ourselves. Uh, maybe we can hopefully uh, implement B2 in Litlam as well um, in, the, in the next few weeks. Uh, but I think one one thing I take away from here, and Adrian, you touched upon this, is the creativity that you used. So, so many opportunities to think about the problem with a fresh look at it and not, not follow like you're supposed to do this or to do that, but, you know, uh, do what makes sense. And if you need to make the model learn a piece of something and a piece of the other something. Maybe you actually positioned two things into different places so they don't uh, they don't interfere, but actually they interact together, which is kind of mind blowing because it's not something that is a given, right? A few years ago, we would have not thought that it would work, I think. But now we're seeing a lot of, let's say, I don't, know, I don't want to say plasticity, but there's a lot of opportunities. And I think you're teaching us that. And so it's a great, uh, great inspiration. Yeah, and what I found also like uh, impressive is that um, just you know after you've done the version one, um, you you were aware of the shortcomings and through experimentation and, and because you were working with the model and you you quickly like in a very short time you actually addressed and fixed the problems, um, and that yeah that that was really just awesome to see. You didn't just stop there and said, okay, this is a solid publication, let's move on. No, actually you you keep improving it like just a month after. So that was really, really nice to see. And yeah, um, Thank you. it's of course hard to keep up with you, but um, yeah, keep, keep doing, yes. <laughs> okay, so thanks again for being with us and it's been a long event. So thanks for sticking until the end. Um, thanks for everyone who participated. Thank you. Peace.